All right, so from this moment, we are recording. Uh, what's up, everybody? Going to be a little bit different podcast this week, and maybe moving forward. Who knows? Uh, me and Pedro kept having issues uh, with our audio files getting corrupt, and you know we're switching over to a new uh, what is it? Uh, software to you know start editing our our podcasts and such. So it's going to look weird the next couple months. And probably uh, from this point forward, to be honest, whenever you're dealing with me, things tend to get weird. So today we are going to be having a review discussion uh, for Destiny 2 as Pedro's back there doing the robot, like perfectly timed, good sir. Uh, speaking of <laughs> speaking of the pride of Apopka, Florida, how are you doing today, Dro? What is going on, man? I'm not sure. Uh, if I'm the pride of Apopka, Florida, we got some issues. But uh, I'm chilling, man. How about you? Uh, it's about the same. Uh, there's not there's not a whole lot of uh, clutch people that come out of a pocket. So you being, you know, the pride of a pocket, bro. Uh, you know, you don't have a lot of competition out there. So. <laughs> uh, sad but true. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about Puerto Rico for a second, bro? Before we get into this, man. I know that's uh, where you were born, and they kind of got rocked by that hurricane, man. So. What's your, what's yeah, your... man, it's a super tough situation that the, the Puerto Rican people are under right now. Many cities have been named a, a disaster zone, my hometown being one of them. Um, there are several um, relief funds that you can, uh, you can uh, choose to donate. Um, Carmelo Anthony's uh, is the one that I chose to donate to simply because uh, I know he's been helping out the, you know, uh, he's been helping out the, the uh, country of Puerto Rico and building like uh, new basketball uh, courts and things like that for the kids. Uh, so I know the money's in good hands uh, when we do that. Cause you know, God, God forbid uh, yeah, people start sending a whole bunch of money over to Puerto Rico and it ends up being a Haiti situation where, you know, they kind of just took the money and uh, the, 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 you know, why clefs fund kind of took the money and ran and, you know, would rather not see that happen to, the beautiful country of Puerto Rico. So uh, if you guys have uh, anything in these, as little as a dollar, uh, please, 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 please do your research. Make sure it gets sent to the, to the right uh, you know, relief fund and uh, send these people some help. That's, yeah, man, very well said. And that, yeah, that's always a big fear of mine too when it comes to like donating. Like, you know how you go to the grocery store and they're like, do you want to do donate a dollar? I'm like, yeah, whose cause is this really going to? You know what I mean? Like, so like Pedro said, just do your research. Uh, make sure you're giving to the right people. And, and you know, a dollar goes a long way. You know what I mean? So um, yeah. help, help these people out. And, you know, our hearts are with you, Puerto Rico. Um, that being said, man, let's uh, get into this review discussion for Destiny 2. Um, what I wanted to start with is uh, let's start with the story, bro. Uh, what's your thoughts on Destiny 2's story, man? Uh, I liked it a lot. Um, I think it was a really good... Um kind of a, a refresh uh for people who haven't for people who were playing and a good beginning for people who kind of skipped it in, in in destiny one uh maybe they thought that you know they heard the bare bones nature of the game and didn't want to invest in it or just thought that you know uh, maybe they, they got into it too late and everyone was too far ahead um i thought it was a great reset um you know the fact that you lose your powers in the beginning and have to kind of you know, fight your way back to kind of reclaim them. The way you reclaimed them was super cool. Um, the the story, uh, it's set in a sci-fi level. The the character, the the you you mentioned that the the villain is Star Wars esque. Uh, some would say. Yeah, you know the whole kind of like we have this you know this machine that can destroy a star. You know, it's kind of like something right out of Star Wars, which I don't mind. You know, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but I do feel like uh, it wasn't a whole lot of originality there. So if somebody's like buying Destiny Two specifically for this like you know unique story. You know, you're not gonna get it here. Um, and you know, this is a major upgrade from destiny one storyline you know like that writing for destiny one was laughable like you know there's the memes out there about how i don't have time to explain why i don't have time to explain you know we've heard it all um 
And again, I just don't think this is going to be... Uh, this isn't a game that I would recommend. Like, get this because of the story. Uh, to me, the, the standout feature of this game is, is not the story. Um, and I think a lot of people already kind of knew that that's how it was going to be. You know, the standout in Destiny 2 is the community, bro. And, like, being able to kind of hop online and, you know, create these clans and, you know, uh, work together... And uh, go on these raids and stuff, man. Like, uh, to me, that's uh, where this game really shines. Like, you know, just the community. And Oh, wow. I threw a shield at that witch and she died with one hit. That was awesome. But um, speaking of shield, so uh, the characters have all new supers. And uh, the Titan, which we're both using, has the Sentinel class, which is the all-new class. What's your thoughts on uh, the Sentinel class? I thought the Sentinel class was pretty cool. Um, I, I do like using the shield, like as if you're Captain America. Yeah, um, dude. Shout out to Cap, bro. I, Team Cap all day. I do. I do like the fact that you can choose to like a an offensive and a defensive style on how to use your super, though. Like, uh, you know, that uh, that I thought was cool. Yeah, definitely, man. Like and like uh building on that, like when you when you bring the Sentinel class over to uh PvP, man, like I would have never expected the the dynamic that it was going to create by being able to just put a shield up because I found a lot of times when I was getting in firefights because the firefights last a lot longer now than they did in Destiny 1, which I love. And like being able to kind of put up that defensive shield adds such a a, a major element to PvP now. And I would I hated PvP on Destiny One, man. Like the only reason I ever played is you know to grind out and try to get some loot. But um, I I find myself being totally into PvP in this one simply because you can be more of a defensive player, uh, which you couldn't really do in the first one. Uh, have you messed around with PvP at all? Yeah, I have. Uh, I played, uh, they have the milestones, so I definitely played it with that. How the fuck are we going to scale this big ass uh, pyramid? Uh, anyway, yes, I have. I played it for the milestones. I'm, we're actually going to play a little bit of PvP here in a minute once we get done with this patrol because it's part of the Rat King quest. So uh, we'll, we'll get a chance to show off kind of, you know, the PvP and what we like and don't like about it here in a minute. Yeah, man. And, uh,. Next thing I want to play. Have you played the uh, the high intensity one, or did you only play the low intensity one? Like, there's two. You know how like they switch. They do, um, kind of like the regular um, PvP, and then they've got like the the one that um, is more competitive, I guess. Yeah. No. The only one I played was uh, the uh, just the quick play. You know, um, that's all okay. I re really jumped into. And it puts it on like a rotating uh, playlist, so you know I played a couple different, um, couple different uh, game types. But um, I mean, I'm loving the P PvP, man. I, I feel like the balance is uh, pretty decent. A lot of people are saying that the Warlock is overpowered. Um, I haven't really experienced it yet, so I can't really speak to it. I, for me, it seems like everything's kind of balanced outside of the Titan specifically, like. They have nerfed the Titan, like, so badly. And, I mean, I think they know that they need to fix it. The fact that, you know, I have to melee you not once, not twice, but three times in order to kill you, even if my shoulder charge is fully charged, like, that's nuts, man. I can see two hits, but not three. Like, so many times I'd be playing a match and, like, I would lose because I get into this melee fight and... And a warlock will kill me with one hit, and then I got to hit him three times. And, you know, uh, that's where the balance is uh, a little bit of an issue with the Titans specifically. And then the grenades, bro. Like, the Titans' grenades are, are terrible in PvP as well. And, uh, you know, they I think they, they kind of over-nerfed it. Um, has that been your experience, or what's your experience been like? You think the, the grenade has been nerfed? Uh, well, I mean, I guess the, the grenade does enough to take like maybe 75 percent of uh the uh how'd you get up there of the uh the person's health away and then after that you gotta let your gun do the rest yeah oh and if you're listening to the audio version only we kind of apologize uh you know like you're not being able to see what we're doing in game and there's gonna be a couple times where 
I got to kind of help Pedro find some things like I'm going to be doing right now. So sorry in advance if you're listening. Actually, you can go up there and do that. You sure? It'll, it'll, it's, yeah, it's, it's it's around this back side um, over here. There's like these steps that you got to to climb to get up here. Um, so, yeah, if you're listening to the audio version only, sorry. But, uh yeah. Sorry, yeah we're 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 doing the rat king quest right now to get the rat king side weapon so uh I, sorry about that we probably should have mentioned that yeah the top of the show. yeah probably but you know hey whatever um next thing i want to talk about bro what's your thoughts on the graphics man because uh a lot of people are saying that um you know like the the art assets too many art assets were borrowed from the first one and like uh you know we listen to kind of funny and all their con content and there's a, a host over that kind of funny name uh andy cortez he's actually like their video editor really cool guy and he brought up a good point man he, uh he just uh was saying how you know when it comes to the graphics, a lot of it looks kind of samey. And then, you know, he, he goes a little deeper into saying how, you know, essentially it's the same exact, um, you know, care, uh, like enemy animations because, you know, you're still fighting the Cabal and the taking and Taken and everything. So, it, you know what I mean? Like, he makes some really yeah. good points. And what's, what's your thoughts on that, man, the graphics? Like, do you think that, you know, there was some laz laziness on Bungie's end? Like, what's your thoughts? Well, graphically, I thought that uh, think that the game looks much better, much smoother. What I what I uh, um, I mean, I do understand where he where he's coming from simply because you're dealing with the same enemies, but that's what kind of what you get though. Yeah. When you're. You know. Yeah, I mean, Bungie they they created this universe, and you know they created uh, this species of enemies, and like. I don't really know what people were kind of expecting when it comes to like, oh, well, you know, we're not getting new enemy types or anything like that. Like, what were they expecting? You know what I mean? Like, it just seems weird to me. Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess it, since it is a, a proper sequel, you would get uh, a new enemy type. But I don't think we'll get a new enemy type at least until maybe the DLC or something like that. Uh, especially since they're continuing it with a new, like... Um, I guess it's well. They did introduce the the fight, like the the cabal that shoots flames and shit. It's like with the flamethrower. Yeah, it's like and like they they enhanced like the the enemy movements and stuff like that. But we're talking more about the the enemy types rather than the graphics. What's your thoughts on the graphics? Do you think that it's a major enhancement? Like, do you feel? Hell yeah, uh, everything looks better. Water <clears throat> looks better. The guns uh, look better. Uh, your Titan looks better. The the animations of the of the uh, oh shit of the um, of the uh, of the supers look cooler. Um, I think uh, the way the grenades explode i think look better um i like the the enemy types look uh, much better as well everything just looks sharper um you i mean how do you like are you still playing on your 4k tv or did you no did you i move it to the nah no nah. so uh for those listening that don't already know this uh i bought the ps4 pro bundle uh for destiny 2 um, Destiny 1, man, I've, I've dumped more hours into that game than any other game by far. I think I had over 1,600 hours logged in the first one, so I knew the second one was going to be one that I was going to be playing for a while, so I bought the, the Destiny 2 Pro Bundle with the beautiful uh, Glacier White PS4, and then, uh, you know, I wasn't planning on making the 4K jump uh, as soon as I have, but I was at Costco, and they had a 4K TV on set sale um and i was playing uh on that television at first but i have recently moved my playstation into my room so i'm i'm playing on a standard 1080p tv uh but i it still looks damn good man like uh i think that when it comes to the graphics like the particle effects like that they added look really cool and uh you know just like smoke and just things in the atmosphere that kind of like immerse me into the world like the first one didn't 
And uh, I did kind of feel like the first one did have a bunch of big empty spaces, so to speak. Like, you know, you would kind of drive your sparrow uh, around these these big, just empty, you know, areas at times. Like, the moon was an exception. Like, I loved, like, uh, hanging out at the moon like on the moon in destiny one uh but i feel like they they did so much better like graphically enhancing destiny two. like you know when you're going on i don't want to spoil too many things in the story but there's going to be some very mild spoilers uh, but there's this part uh where you're kind of going on a mission to reobtain your super and uh you know what level i'm talking about pedro where you're in like a creepy forest kind of look yeah, you have to do that uh, two more times when you get to your other, like when you get the other supers, <clears throat> uh, and it gets even creepier. Yeah, <laughs> and like to me, like that's what Destiny needed. Like you know those different changes in the and you know the what is it like the the areas and and like you know like every place feels unique like when you're on titan you know you're on titan like the aesthetic like lends itself so well into letting you know where you're at and then io looks completely different and uh it's it just when it when it comes to the visuals man it to me it it does look like it could technically be a destiny one game until you really start getting into the levels th themselves and like you know you notice so much more details in this one in my opinion like that's not everybody's opinion but you know that's my opinion on it for sure i mean i, I completely agree with you i think that that you're absolutely right you hit the nail on the head when you said that you can you know every map looks different it's very distinguishable um uh, you, the best part about it is the music as soon as you come into going to a different planet the music is much much different and it feels different um just you know kind of like the missions that you're going through and in and, and like io for example has this ominous feel to it and i think it's because of the music that we're uh, that we're listening to um you know that's it's just it, i think they did a good a good enough job yeah um next thing i want to talk about pedro uh and before we do it why don't you uh bring us to the next area that we need to for this rats king quest um, um well, on your on your rax king's quest can you go and check to see how many things you have complete yeah I have two out of three let's see rats king Sorry, quest i have two out of three as well all right so i'm gonna check this out real quick uh, complete two crucible matches with the fire team. All right, so we'll go do that then. All, All right, we're going. To, we're going to uh, hit up. The oh, crucible. for for those uh, watching on YouTube, you're going to get to see two filthy casuals that uh, you know we're not the best PvP players by any means, but you're going to see us probably fail pretty decently, or who knows, we might just surprise you and do well. <laughs> we'll see. I'm doing the the regular one now, so. Uh, oh. But while while you're uh, while we go into that, what what was uh, the the so, next topic you wanted to speak? So on? I wanted to talk about uh, like the new loot that that you're finding and like the new weapons and stuff. Um, you know, one of the big fusses people had is that a lot of the year or not year one, but Destiny one exotics and and armor were making it into Destiny two and like. Have you seen a lot of like re recycled like uh, exotics and like you know what's your thoughts uh, on the weapons and the exotics and the loot? Uh, I like it a lot. The loot, I think I'm getting enough. Uh, the loot frequency, I think, is, is is pretty nice. It's not as as demoralizing as it was in uh, Destiny One. You remember Destiny One where you would get loot and it'd be the same shit you had on? Yeah, um, and that's that would piss me off. <clears throat> That's happened to me, unfortunately. Like, I've gotten the damn... What's the name of this helmet right here? I have gotten the Devastation Complex helmets probably 10 times. Like, no exaggeration, dude. And, like, you know, all that stuff's more aren't... More powerful or the same? I was going to say more powerful, but the same actual helmet type. So, yes, like, it, you are getting a more powerful helmet. But, I mean, like, you can infuse the same helmet anyway and essentially make it, you know more powerful that way but um yeah you know like i, I do i do like and uh, when speaking about armor and stuff like that i do like the way that you can infuse and power up your items in a much easier fashion than you could last time yeah oh for sure dude like uh destiny one man like 
it feels like that game went out of its way to make it a nightmare to upgrade your stuff. But in this one, man, it just, it's so much easier to upgrade. Like I was worried at first because you needed like four legendary shards. And I'm like, well, great, you know, because Destiny 1, you rarely got legendaries. And like in this one, I feel like I'm definitely getting legendaries a lot quicker than I did in the first one. And like at first I was... I was concerned because, you know, you want legendaries to feel like, you know, uh, you know, uh, good when you get them, like, you know, like it's a high tier reward. And um, there, there's actually no worry, man, because you get plenty of them, but they still every time you get them, man, it's like it's something like it's it just seems like it's something uh like when it comes to the weapon if i get a new legendary weapon it feels so much different than the one i got before it and it really gives you incentive to try them all out to see oh my god titan nation look at this but uh yeah man um i feel like the loot system's really good in this uh i feel like the economy like or uh what am i trying to say here uh like the economy yeah is a lot better in this one as well like the first one like it didn't really make uh everything that you got like you know you'd be you get all this glimmer and you really had no use for it in the first one you know outside of you know, like the first 40 hours you know after that it was just like oh i got all this glimmer and this one you actually need glimmer for a while bro oh, yeah dude well you use you use glimmer for everything now man and i just got fucking rocked by the entire team of four right there turned the corner and they're right in my face um and uh oh, yeah no I, I completely understand what you're saying see now glimmer everything has a value now though so yeah. like before like you said you would just collect glimmer and have you know a hundred thousand glimmer or you know almost a million glimmer depending on how often you played and you wouldn't do anything with it now i mean you at least you at least have that glimmer um to uh you use it when you're putting on legendary weapons you're using it when you put on uh your uh temporary uh fucking uh colors and your um on oh your shaders armor. yeah you you use it for everything bro you use it to when you put on your mods it's like everything costs glimmer um which at first i thought was annoying but then when you think about it i mean what else are you gonna do with the glimmer because uh everything else costs legendary marks yep yep for sure and uh when you're talking about that you brought up shaders bro so uh What's your thoughts on this whole controversy surrounding shaders and the fact that they are disposable? Uh, it kind of annoys me because I, I, I got this super dope um, pink shader, which I haven't shared the um, the screenshot in the uh, yet, uh, simply because I'm lazy. And, but I mean, I was like, yo, I bought this pink for a while. And then uh, I got more powerful gear and didn't decide to uh, infuse the one that I had uh, and use the other one and now I look like you know I got out of the Sh Salvation Army um, so uh, and, and I don't even know how to get the pink shader either it, it'd be different if I knew how to get the pink shader I don't know where to get it like it's one of those things where I got it as a reward from a mission or something and it and that was that was it like I, you know um, yeah I, I just don't know where to get it from. yeah it is kind of annoying not knowing like where to get actual sh i don't know if there's a way to actually figure out like what you need to do to get like certain shaders or if it's all just completely random like I'm not... i haven't looked into it i know that they're that they're based on you know like i got the pink shader on titan so i gotta go to titan complete some stuff and hope that it that, that, it, that i get it but I mean, if you're going to make me, right, if you're going to make me spend five, ten bucks to get some silver, right, because the, the three types of currency are what? Legendary marks, the silver, and then glimmer. And I think that's it, if I'm not mistaken. And, oh, like, and exotic shark. Bright dust and shit. Oh, yeah, bright dust and all that. Which, like, have you figured out what that's used for? Yeah, for, for, for stuff in that. So, bright dust is stuff that you can, is the currency you can win to go to um uh the eververse market and get bright uh, and get uh, like a, a bright shard to then get uh, oh okay package and things like that but like you don't get bright dust enough in game to like fucking 
you know what? Using pulse rifles in in uh, PvP for me just isn't working. <laughs> uh, I'm using auto. Are, I'm using my auto rifle. Yeah, these dudes are fucking kicking ass with the auto rifle. Um, but anyway, like I was saying, oh. uh, yeah, bright dust you don't get often enough, bro. Yeah, for sure. Um. Now, let's talk about the challenges that they have on each planet now, because I think that that's really cool. So when you spawn into a planet, uh, if you pull up your ghost, it'll have like this this list of three different things uh, that that you do and, and they're daily challenges. And uh, doing so will re reward you some loot. Like what's your thoughts on challenges, bro? Do you find that you're doing I, I them? Yeah, I mean, I, I find that I'm doing them. I think that they're better than the than the. Um a bounty they used to get from the bounty um from the the little robot that you can get the bounty from i forgot what, what it is a uh, quartermaster i think is, or not is it quarter it is it quartermaster i don't know uh either way uh you used to get bounties and, and you used to choose your bounties and now it's just three challenges that you can complete on a daily basis per world that you're in they're fairly simple to kill you know 75 fallen um or go visit this lost sector or you, you gotta know, find go the 10 shards shards or whatever it's like yeah it's 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 fairly simple things that you do throughout the world as you're exploring i like it it's pretty cool ah he popped his special right on me dude but yeah um i i like it because it kind of like how it like like while i'm waiting for a public event you know, I'll just go, you know, search around for some shards, you know, trying to complete the challenges. I feel like it's good busy work in between, like, you know, public events and stuff like that. And, you know, it's fun to kind of just get lost in the actual, you know, world of destiny. And, um, you know, speaking of getting lost in the world, bro, what's your thoughts on, uh, like, uh, the lost sectors themselves, like, have you done a lot of Lost them? Sectors are super cool. Yeah, Lost Sectors are really, really cool. I like them a lot. Yeah, me too, man. Like, uh, I did see some people, like, complaining, like, they didn't feel like it was worth doing because it didn't give you good loot. But that has not been my experience at all. I think maybe people just assume that that's the case because I get some really good loot from these Lost Sectors. I mean, I've gotten a couple Legendary Engrams, um, a lot of Glimmer. Fuck, dude. This dude put on his fucking that dark mall uh super that he's got. Yeah, I, me all up. Don't worry, I took him out for you, bro. Titan Shield. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I had to like, avenge yeah, your death, bro. <laughs> Good shit. Uh, by the way, for those of you listening on audio, uh we're getting our fucking ass kicked. Eighteen or uh, thirty-nine to eighteen. Thirty-nine uh, to twenty yeah. now. 39 to 20 but last um, i checked me and you were on the uh the leaderboard on our team which doesn't uh bo what is the word i'm looking for boat well well yeah boat yeah, well doesn't bode well for the team but our team because here we are doing a podcast <laughs> and we're doing better than these these scrubs yeah. okay that now sucks. camaro king is uh beating yeah. us so but yeah um the Lost Sectors, I really, really enjoy because I feel like some of the most beautiful parts of the world are in those Lost Sectors, you know. And for those of you that don't know what a Lost Sector is, uh, a Lost Sector is just these... It's just I, an unmarked part in the, in the actual... In the, in the, uh, op in the actual open world, world. yeah. Like, um, well, it's, it's not unmarked. It's marked. It's you, just uh, they make it seem like it's, you know... Uh, a sector where you have to go and, and, and discover, quote unquote, even though it's marked on the map. Let's yeah, see. yeah, and uh, like so, basically, you open up your map and there'll be like a horseshoe-looking like uh, icon, and uh, you basically you go to that icon, and somewhere in the world you'll see like a painting, whether it be on the side of a building or on the side of like a, a truck or anything in the environment. Once you see that painting. Uh, you look around and there's going to be the entrance to like a cave system and then you grind your way through the cave system and then at the very end of the the, uh, the cave, there's going to be this enemy type, uh, you know, he's 
he's yellow so like you know he's got a shield and stuff like that and once you beat him you get a key that unlocks his unlocks a, a, a treasure chest and you know like i said i've gotten great loot out of it and it's something that when they announced it uh during the destiny 2 reveal I was so hyped. I was like, yes, this is exactly what I wanted because it's something for the solo player to be able to do. It's it's almost like a little mini raid uh, that you get to do by yourself. And uh, those were the types of things that I was looking forward to the most in Destiny 2. Um, I'm currently, bro, that's crazy. We both are 267 light level. Yeah. That is crazy. Just so happens. But. I more or less got myself to this light level with very little help from anybody else. Like me and Mike, uh, we did some public events together. Um, but I mean, ultimately, I was able to reach this light level just kind of solo grinding. Um, how how have you gotten yourself to 267? Um, pretty much just doing... Uh, I did. I played like one night with or a couple nights with Mike and then did a couple of... Uh, public events and then just kind of follow his advice and went and did uh, all of the you know all of the missions after the the main storyline is over where they kind of where everyone kind of has like additional things for you to do around the area yeah let me do though he told me just to do those and save them until i got to 265 and then turn them all in uh and that's kind of how i've gotten to the 267 just uh doing that uh, yeah, and now uh, once I'm once I'm at 265 is when he recommended to do the epic or the exotic uh, weapon uh, challenges. So you know the, we have a much higher uh, chance of actually uh, getting like a 270 weapon or something like that. So heck yeah, dude. Yeah, like it seems like everyone has their little trick to leveling up, and everyone thinks that their way of leveling up is the way. But again. It's been my experience, bro, that I, I've been able to kind of level up just by playing the game, you know, like that's been my experience. And I think that's freaking awesome, you know, like um, I think we are finally at that point that for me and you to get really any further, like we're going to either need to do, start doing the nightfall or the raid. Well, in order to get the Rat King, we got to do the, the Nightfall, but we got to finish the Nightfall with five minutes left. So, have you ever played the Nightfall? I played it for the first time uh, a couple nights back. No, but I'm glad you um, have because I wanted to talk about that next. Bro, the Nightfall, right? So, now the Nightfall is, uh, is timed. It's, all, it's not only super fucking hard, but it's timed as well. So, uh, it, for, it, in this case, you have a, a strike that I, I believe is on IO, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm uh, drawing a blank as to where it's at. I've uh, seen a lot of com people or a lot of people complain that the nightfall is now timed. What's your thoughts on that? Is it is it something that adds unnecessary tension? Do you think it adds a level of depth? Like, what do you think? Uh, uh, to me, to me, I've only ha I've only tried it once, and I'm like, why why do I have 15 minutes to complete this long ass fucking mission where these care where these uh, uh, ad or uh, you know. Uh, see when the CPU is a fucking bullet sponge. Uh, oh, and uh, they can shoot me twice, and I'm like, you know, dead. So, uh, in my opinion, the time aspect of it uh, is kind of annoying. But from what I get told, from what I got told, that our first time was just shit. And, you know, because Mike finished it like uh, I think after three tries. So. Oh, there's uh, that damn meter tool. Yeah, the meter tool, bro, that's that's another complaint people have. Uh, everyone's bitching that it's being used in PvP, PvP too much. But, I mean, it is what it is, man. The like, what? The, the meter tool, it's that, what is it, a scout rifle that, like, uh, basically two headshots and, and you're dead with that thing, man. Is that what it's called, a meter tool? I've always, I always read it as multi-tool, but maybe I'm, a, maybe I'm just misreading it. Who knows? What did, um, what did you say you read it as? Multi tool. Oh yeah, multi uh, meter tool. I think is what it's called. Oh, all right, because I'm like, uh, I had never heard of a meter tool. Either way, everyone says that like once you get that gun, it's it's great. You know what gun I got? For, oh fuck, I gotta go see Zer. I haven't seen Zer yet. I want to get that rocket launcher. Oh, I already got it, dude. It's it's pretty badass, man. Did he leave? Uh, la, 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 la. oh, dude, I don't know. You might be able to sneak in there. I know. I think he hangs around until like, 
uh, like 12 o'clock. So like we literally got like 20 minutes to head over there. Uh, I could be wrong though. He might already be gone. Someone's, he might, he might already left. Someone, someone's probably watching or listening. And they're like, no, he's gone. Yeah, he's on. He's out of here. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, that's what I get for like having a social life and doing things. Right. I should have uh, I should, I stopped home and fucking got that rocket launcher. Mm-hmm. Uh, although I'm not a, uh, what, what's your favorite type of power weapon? Are you a rocket launcher guy? Are you a shotgun guy? Do you, so, uh, do you prefer the fusion rifle? I was going to say, I don't necessarily have a favorite, but I'll tell you what I don't like. Um, I'm not into sniper rifles, dude. Like, uh, again, uh, being more of like a casual player, like I just don't have what it takes to sit there and, and pull off these six snipes, man. Like, so I, I tend to uh, gravitate towards uh, rocket launchers and, and the new uh, weapon type that they added, the, um, what is it, the grenade launcher. Like currently, I literally just got this today, the Prospector, and I'm wrecking with this thing in PvP, dude. Like, um, I love it a lot, man. Like, the grenade launcher is dope, man. Do you like, do you like it? Uh, I don't. I don't really mess with the grenade launcher too much. I am exclusively a sniper guy. Oh uh, wow, that's shocking. Yeah, I, I think the sniper rifle. Uh, I think Destin has made using the sniper rifle really easy. It does fucking. I mean, it does work against uh, certain enemies as well. Um, if I need to switch it up and use something else, let's say a sniper rifle isn't. Uh, the most convenient weapon to use against a, a you know a, a, in, in a boss battle, then I'll go rocket launcher. Um, but I tried the grenade launcher and I wasn't very happy with it. Like I was just like, oh, all right, I guess it's like a less powerful rocket launcher or with you know less um, spread when it, when it explodes and stuff. Um, so that, that's you know that's where I went. Um, Shotguns, I wasn't happy with either. Yeah, I know, and that was disappointing, man. Cause I really love using shotguns, but yeah, man, I'm I, I don't I don't really like shotguns in this one anymore. I don't know but, if they were nerfed. I don't know if they've been nerfed or what. But well, I just I don't think they're as effective as you would expect a shotgun to be. So shotguns, yeah. they used to be a, a a special weapon, not not a heavy weapon, and that that's one yeah. of the biggest changes. And it's hard to justify rocking a shotgun when I could be rocking like a rocket launcher instead. You know what I mean? Like it's it that it's kind of truncated it to me to where I would I would just rather have a freaking sniper or I mean a uh, a rocket launcher over a shotgun unless PVE I mean then you can definitely roll with a shotgun and just you know mow through enemies but in PVP it's too hard it's too hard to close the gap and get in there with the shotgun um, I mean I can't think of a single time that I've died by a shotgun uh, during PVP so. Um, I mean, for me, I think if a shotgun's gonna be a powerful we a power weapon, it's got a, it's got a wreck shot, bro. And, and and in my opinion, it just doesn't. And I think it should just go back to being a special weapon because it just doesn't ah. do the things you expect a power weapon to do. Dude, in I was, my opinion, I was just wrecking with my Sentinel class, dude. Oh, it's so good. Being able to be uh, Titan Captain America, like. Come on, man! Like that's freaking amazing. Wouldn't that be cool if you use a shader to change the color of your shield? Oh, they have to do that, dude! Like, give me a shader that makes me red, white, and blue too. Like, oh, come on, just do it. Come on, Activision, you love money. Take my money. But yeah, I mean, um, what else? What else do we need to talk about, bro? We haven't talked about the sparrow. Um, do you think the sparrow uh, feels good in this game? Um, there, there, there's something kind of. Did it take you long to get the sparrow? Did you have to finish the game to get it, or did you get it while playing? Yeah, so uh, I pretty much finished the storyline, uh, and then at the very end of it is when I got mine. Is that around the time you got yours, or? No, I got it. I got it before I finished the story. Uh, I got it while doing public events and things like that. Oh, see. Um, I didn't know it like could be unlocked it? that Jeez. way. Yep. Oh, cool. Do you feel like you need it? Um, 
Absolutely not. And in fact, I'm kind of glad that they they waited to give it to me because, you know, uh, when you're driving that Sparrow, you miss so much in the world. You know what I mean? Like, I love having it now that I kind of got to experience the world and and take it all in. Um, But I I feel like uh, getting it at the end was was fine, fine enough for me. Dope. Um, I I don't think you needed it either. Uh, I mean, it does help when you're going across the map, I guess. But I mean, with the with the fact that you could you have like these little checkpoints and things like that, or you could kind of fast travel to, it really isn't um, as needed as it was back in in, in the old game. That you know, Destiny did a great job of uh, you know, maneuverability within the maps. Shout out to freaking fast travel, dude. I love it. I like it a lot, too. Okay, so uh, I like it. Um, so I currently have your Titan on screen for those listening. Uh, I'm inspecting your player. So tell me about your Titan, bro. Uh, tell me why you're wearing each piece and, and, and give me a breakdown. Well, I'm wearing the, the, the Lost Pacific Helm simply because it's, you know, 275. But it gives me improved mo- uh, mobility, and then I, I gave it uh, the the mod to uh, charge my recharge my um, abilities um, using the subclass that I have. Uh, the Phoenix Strike type that I just have to improve uh, recovery. Um, I do like I do like the little horns and stuff that are, that are coming out, little spikes. Um, on the uh, the oh. right shoulder. Yeah, dude. Where did you get these bad boys? Um, I think uh, oh, I got these from a. Um, hold on, I'm a I'm gonna shade them up. Because uh, I got these from a. My issue uh, with, with the uh, Titans so far has been the gauntlets. I have not been able to find gauntlets that I that I actually like. That you um, like. Yeah, man, like, to me, like, the ones that I keep finding are so bulky, like, even the ones I'm wearing right now, they just make it look too bulky, like, big old blocks on your, on your shoulders, uh, the ones I'm wearing are my favorite of what I've found, like, I kind of like the netting that's on the side of it, but, um, uh, for those watching, I'm gonna kind of switch and show you what I'm talking about, so, yeah, these things are atrocious, the, the Terra Concord Fist, uh they're atrocious um let's see the wild i think that's what i was wearing yes it is uh oh the feedback fences are uh, have returned in this one uh for those of you that remember in destiny one the feedback fences have this little uh perk on them that you know basically if an enemy gets really close and they melee you it causes like splash damage all around you and these things are really clutch to use like when you're doing any missions with the thrall um Here's the retro grades again. Looks like the same freaking thing. Big old blocks on the shoulders. So yeah, that's been uh, my experience with uh, you there. Oh, my controller just died for those listening. Yeah, sorry, dude. My controller literally just died. Or wait. Oh, okay. No, it didn't even die. It says I have. It says it's charged. Um, it okay. just it just turned off. That ain't good. Yeah, uh, maybe it just lost the uh, Bluetooth connection for a little bit there. It, it, it happens. Oh man, hope that I doesn't. Just, I just uh, redid my guy. So, um, it, we have another player to join. I us. was gonna say, yeah, this is TJ from the group. So I'm gonna bring him into the chat, uh, bro. This is a top tier Destiny player right here. This kid. Hey, what's up, TJ? Um, can you hear him, Pedro? Nah, did you add him to the? No, I think he's talking. On the... Yeah, I can on hear him. Phones. Yeah, I can hear him, which is weird because we're in a private chat. Let me add him to the chat and uh, see what he has to say invite players uh again sorry audio listeners but uh yeah you know it is what it is all right so what happens when we're doing the live stream and and uh, podcast at the same time super cool though yeah so let's see what he has to say this is somebody that again uh 
I think he might have even finished the raid, if I'm not mistaken. So it'll be really good to have him on this podcast. So we'll see if he joins up. Uh, but yeah, the back back to the gauntlets. Um, not a huge fan of the gauntlets. Uh, I finally got my chess piece that I've been after. Hey, what up, TJ? What up, Jay? Uh, you are live on the Jay and Dro show. Just so you know, we are recording this. We're doing a review for Destiny 2, and I'm so glad that you've entered the chat because I was just telling everybody how you are a high-level Destiny player. Uh, what are your thoughts, man? What do you like? What do you don't like? Uh, what What's your thoughts? So far... When you get to 272 power level, it's basically a grind. It, it's kind of iffy of how people are figuring out how to get past it, but when you go to your milestones, if you get to uh, where it says uh, possible rewards for uh, powerful gear, that's where you're going to get your 280 gear, possibly. Um, the grind for itself into up to 272 isn't that hard. I got two characters up there within two days. Damn. It's been a lot of fun. That's nuts. Now, have you ran the raid yet or no? Nope. Yeah, okay. I was wondering, man. Normally, like, you're like one of the day one players freaking banging out the raid quickly. Uh, what's kept man, you... I haven't had the time. I wanted to do it tomorrow or Tuesday. It's, it's trying to find people to play with. Right. My work schedule. Right, right. That's uh, that seems to always be the case with me as well. I just can't get a a raid party together. But, um, what's your thoughts on PvP? I know you're uh into the PvP stuff. Um, right now the the meta is auto rifle, scout rifles with uh, you know, multi tool being front and foremost. Scout rifles and hand cannons are subpar across the board, even with the. Uh, Exotic Vigilance Wing, which is one of the best pulse levels in the game. It's just subpar. Um, other than that, everything's pretty balanced. Other than the little bit of lag spikes, this is a lot of fun. Any weapon you choose, you can go in there. Go in there if you're good enough. You can roll the land with it. There's just scout rifles and auto rifles are the meta. So if you're not used to uh, going with the meta, you'll have a hard time. But other than that, it's a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to playing Trials of the Nine with a group of four. Yeah, I was going to say, man, uh, you're somebody, you you went to the Lighthouse multiple times in Destiny 1, so um, yep. they changed up the way that works in this game. So what do you know about uh, the, the the new loot system for the Trials? Um, I'm not really sure. I haven't got into it yet, but I do believe the Seven Winds is... Still, what you'd usually get is a package. Um, okay, because I, I saw, honestly think that's what it is. I haven't got the chance to get in there yet. I just unlocked it. I just completed the Call of Arms milestone last night. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so I, from what I was hearing, I don't think you have to go flawless now to to get the reward. So. I was like, that's a, that's a change. Yeah. But if you do wow. go flawless, like you might get it. I think you get like a higher tier reward, but you don't have to go flawless to get the rewards now. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. But and going back to what your first question for me was, how is the loot system is really weird because a lot of people are saying if you level up five times, say like you get a bright ingram five times, you get a chance of getting a higher tier reward like one or two points higher than you got. Yesterday and today, I just got on and got a, a loot package from uh, the Vanguard. One was 273 and I got a second reward that was 280. So it's really, really, really iffy of how the loot system works. Nobody can narrow it down so far that I know of. Damn, so um, a lot of people are saying that uh, Destiny 2 could really just be called Destiny 1.5, and it's not a true sequel. Do you do you agree with that statement, or do you think this feels like a fully fleshed out sequel? This that's... feels like a, this feels like a total a total sequel. We don't no longer have PS3 and Xbox 360 holding the game back. This game's got a lot to put out. Yes, maybe it feels like it at first, but they've got a lot of DLC to be putting out. They got a lot of storyline that they still have yet to reveal. So the people just need to relax and just take take the game for what it is right now. It's a lot of fun, a lot of new stuff added to it. Just have fun. 
Yeah, that was me and Pedro's uh, overall sentiment about it as well. Um, one thing uh, me and Pedro are both in love with, both being Titans, we love the new Sentinel class. I see you're rocking a Hunter. Uh, tell me about the Hunter's new supers. Are you into them, and what are they? I love the Arc Strider. Arc Strider is um, the Blade Dancer 2.0. There's a lot of different uh, dodging moves with it. You got, you got your two setups for it, like the top and lower bottom. You press uh, B while in the super, you have a couple of different dodging moves. It's uh, up against, like, say, the Titan's just a Havoc. It takes two to three hits with a high t uh, Titan resilience. But just for the most part, it's a fun class. Good PvP class. A nice stalker. They've changed it up a little bit. I haven't really too much used it, nor, nor the Golden Gun. This has been an arc starter for PvP. The golden gun they added up to six times you can shoot it but it is within three seconds you no longer have your super oh wow that's nuts like if you don't use it and you're trying to find a target you immediately lose it now, now the hunter is your ult correct your you you main a uh, warlock correct yeah I, but i got my warlock up to 270 and now i'm working on my hunter and my, usually my warlock is my pv uh, pve class my uh, pvp class is my uh hunter What's your thoughts on on uh, on the warlock? You, um, Dawnblade for me is subpar. I feel like it could do a little bit more damage, considering what it is. Because I was doing a strike. I used the sword and I hit the boss all uh, six times the sword to hit it. I did more damage with one Nova bomb than I did with all those swords combined. I literally. Took barely an inch off the health bar of a, a main boss, the Dawn Blade Nova Bomb. I t still take out over a quarter of health. Damn. Okay. Damn. That's crazy. All right. Well, we're right at about the 50 minute mark, so uh, I want to kind of wrap this thing up. Uh, Pedro, give me your overall opinion of Destiny 2. Uh, would Would you recommend it? And uh, you know, again, I want I gotta ask that question one more time. Is this a true sequel? Uh, yeah, man, it's it's absolutely a true sequel. I, I would definitely recommend it, especially to someone uh, who likes to, like yourself, to normally play solo, um, you know, whether it be because of scheduling purposes or just because you like to play alone. Uh, don't, you know, deprive yourself of experiencing Destiny. I think this game uh, definitely does playing solo justice. It is much more fun playing um uh, in a group of course but I, I think it's still a game worth experiencing um and honestly um it's probably my game of the year right now um i know shadow of war uh i told you it was gonna be it but i think this might you know oh damn bro those are that's a bold statement there um now before i get pedro or i mean um tj's take on it, i want to just what's your biggest gripe about it the shaders dude um i want to be able to, to keep my shaders you know regardless of what piece of armor that i that i want i mean it, it, it it's so difficult to find one that you actually like and then you know once you get it and you put it on and then you you know find a better piece of armor that does uh what you want it to do without having to put on crazy mods or whatever um it sucks that i have to you know get rid of it and then not be able to find it easily either um, it, it is also terrible because the marketplace doesn't have everything. It's kind of like you got to go back to, like for example, the pink one, the the bright pink one that I, or the neon pink one that I that I had. Um, you have to go to Titan uh, to to get, and I mean, you just got to hope that you know you get the luck of the draw whenever it, you roll in like a public event or whatever. It kind of yeah. sucks. Yeah, for sure. Uh, TJ, you pretty much uh, already kind of told us uh, you definitely love Destiny 2 and you think it's a true sequel. Uh, so what is your, what's your biggest gripe about Destiny 2? Um, well, going back to what Pedro says, the shader system, it makes no sense that we no longer get to have it forever. And for the loot drops, said like Pedro was talking about wanting that shader, you only get three of them. Per, uh, per drop sometimes, and that's not enough to fill up your entire armor setup with your chest plate, your gauntlets, your pants, and your helmet, and your cape. It's yeah. like, plus you're, your not able to use, you're not able to use them all, and yeah, plus your guns. It, 
it makes no sense to be a consumable instead of a, a shader where you can put it on everything. Yeah, for sure. Um, for me, my overall opinion of the game pretty much right in line with what you guys are saying. Uh, I got to go with what Pedro said as well. This is my game of the year so far, which that's not a hard title to earn, being that I haven't had a PlayStation until this game launched. So, uh, But I think that will still be the case. Uh, I'm, I plan on playing Horizon here pretty soon, so we'll see if it's a good enough game to dethrone Destiny 2. But I doubt it, man. I've, I've always been a huge Destiny fan. Um, and my biggest gripe, interestingly enough, is uh, also the shader thing, man. It's it's so crazy how all three of us had the same gripe. And it's just a mu minuscule thing, too. It's, it's just a shader. But, you know, this game kind of lives and dies on the loot system and being able to make your character look cool. And, and when you, you know, kind of take the shaders and make them a disposable like that that's like a super bummer and and then just like you said pager like you know it just kind of being like the luck of the draw if you if you get the shader not like uh that's kind of a bummer and uh uh pager weren't you telling me that on reddit like you know that was like the number one uh thing on reddit there for a while was the shader system yeah yeah, so that that's something that I think that Bungie needs to address, and hopefully they will. Uh, but if, if Pedro, if you don't have anything else you want to close on, I'm going to go ahead and end this thing. Yeah, man. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching uh, our review discussion for Destiny 2. We highly recommend the game for those of you into multiplayer shooters. Uh, we'll see you again next week for another episode of the Jay and Dro Show. Later. Peace.